Welcome back to Balmer's Workshop and thanks so much for joining me for another build. Today we're going to be putting together some sliders for a Suzuki Sidekick. This is a first generation, that's 1989 to 1998, four-door model. So let's get right into it. Here I am with the main rails. The main rails are obviously the main portion of the slider. These ones are 61 and a half inches long on the long side of the cuts. These are 45 degree cuts. So the, uh, the long side, which is the top side of the slider is 61 and a half inches long. And then those 45 degree cuts are capped with some, uh, some little uh, eighth inch thick caps that I make up for them and weld them all the way around, uh, sand them down and then finish them with a, uh, a flapper disc or a blender disc if you prefer. Um, get those looking nice and smooth and that's really it for the main rails. You see one already finished against the wall and I'm just about finished with this one. There you go. So this is a second pair that I'm building right now. So you can see the first pair that are already roughed up on the bench there and I'm just measuring up the tube for the kick out. That's the rear section of the, of the uh, slider. The tape measure was just there on the main rail that I was just finishing up on the second set. Uh, you can see this set that's on the bench is uncapped. Uh, but anyway, point being, right now I'm measuring up the kick out uh, for the first bend. So I've just made a line where I'm going to put my first bend into that. And now we'll go over to the bender and put it in and chuck it up. So the bender that I use is a uh, JD Squared Model 3. Uh, it's a pretty basic bender, but it's been great for me. I've uh, used it for many years with great success. Again, you see me marking my uh, start point on my bend there. I uh, put the collar in and chuck that uh, tube up into the bender nice and tight, uh, making sure that it's bang on line with the starting bend uh, mark. Tighten everything up into place and grab a pry, pry bar for my, uh, my handle, um, or a handle extension I guess I should really call it, uh, to give myself a little extra leverage and we'll go ahead and make this first bend which is 90 degrees. Um, the, this bend, I don't have to worry about playing a bend because it is the first bend, so I just go ahead and run it all the way through to 90, just making sure that I don't go over 90. There is a little bit of spring back, so I generally find I need to go about 2 to 3 degrees past the point that I, uh, that I want to end up at. So in this case, I'll wind up pulling it through to 92 or 93 degrees, and then once the tube springs back and relaxes, it'll be at dead on 90. So there you go, I'm at 90 degrees, I've withdrawn it from the bender, and I'm now marking the end of the bend, and here I'm remarking the beginning of the bend. It's important to know where your bends begin and end. And now I'm going to mark uh, my next mark for my, my next bend. Uh, that is about 8 inches from my first bend, so I've got about 8 inches of flat space on this uh, kick out. Um, you saw me make a funny face there, and that's because I realized that I marked the wrong side of the tube. I do that once in a while. Um, so instead, I'm remarking this side at 8 inches, and now I'm going to place this back into the bender and do my 45 degree bend for the front of the kickout. Now, being as this is a second bend, or anything but the first bend in the tube, you really have to pay attention to plane of bend. Um, so that's why you see me place this digital angle finder on there, and I'm going to set that at 0 degrees to the die. So wherever the die is, the, the, the tube has to sit dead flat with that if you want your tube ends to end up flat. And that's the whole point of this, is I'm making sure it sits at dead zero, so that that way when I make this bend, the 45 degree, and I place this kicker on a flat surface, the end of the 90 degree bend and the end of the 45 degree bend will be both flat on the surface. So again, um, the plane of bend is very critical in that case. If I was out by as much as one degree, I'd probably have at least a quarter inch of discrepancy on the ends of those tubes, which is unacceptable for me. So now I'm putting it into my handy dandy coping saw. Some people call it notching, some people call it coping. I prefer coping. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm cutting this to pre-marked um, points. I have a template for the kick out so I know exactly where to make my marks. Uh, it's just much faster that way to make things in a production fashion and I do make a lot of these sliders so although I don't sit there and produce them all day long I do like to have a template that I can go by to make things a lot faster. So I didn't have to do a lot of measuring with this one I just placed it against a template and made the marks. And over the last few seconds here I have been creating the supports which separate the main rail from the rub rail and obviously set the distance between those two. 
Um, that's going to be used to accurately cope my rub rail, which I am now creating in the bender. I'm going to put a 45 degree bend on the front of the rub rail, which will match the uh, 45 degree bend on the front of the kick out. So you get a nice aesthetic look and obviously also it's um, going to ward away obstacles at the beginning of the slider. So if you come off of a, a tree or a rock with the front bumper, this is going to be the portion that pushes the vehicle away from, uh, from that obstacle. And here we go setting up the, uh, the method to, uh, to cope this with. And what I do is I set my supports in place and then I take a scrap piece of material to, uh, to simulate my main rail. Put that in place as you see me doing here. Run it up to the uh, bend in the rub rail so that I can then just go ahead and make a mark right there. And now when I put my main rail in place of that, uh, that little piece of scrap tube, it'll be a nice perfect fit up. So basically I've got a, a perfect mark there to make my cope. So you see me take my tube now and put it into the coping saw at that mark that I made, <clears throat> set it to level, and make my cope, and I should have a really clean fit up uh, once, once I'm done. So let's see if that is the case. Set it to zero, make the cope. I'll just take a blending disc and clean the end of that cope up a little bit and put it in place and it looked good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the 45 degree cope on the back end just to make, uh, make it match up to the uh, slider and it fit really well. Here's a better view of the sliders from above and an example of two different uh, styles of kickout that I offer and the customer decided to go for the simpler of the two which is my standard kickout. And now I am tacking the sliders up, uh, just fitting everything together, making sure my fit up is correct with the calipers and once I'm happy with it I'm tacking it up so the kicker is done and now on to the rub rail check check and tack tack so now on to the supports so I'll uh, center the the support for the kicker up and make sure it's all nice and straight tack it into place and then do the same for the uh, supports on the rub rail I'll set them at an equal distance apart and make sure that they're nice and straight Tack them in place, and that completes the tack up for that slider, and uh, we're done. On to welding for that one, and that'll be the next phase, and now we'll fit up and tack the second slider. Everything placed in place. Check it with calipers. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to shorten that support because it was a little bit long. The kicker support was uh, too long for the kicker to, uh, to seat itself properly in uh, both of its locations, so I shortened it just a little bit there, blended it down, get it back in place, tack it up, check everything, and onto the rub rail again. And there we are, get the supports right where I want them, tack them, do the same for the rub rail. And we're ready for weld up on these things. Both of these sliders are tacked and complete just as I want them to be. Over here we've got our sliders. Again, very heavy duty setup. And uh, I've gone ahead and added um, roof basket mounts to that. Um, and again, in a double shear fashion, these sliders feature a nice kick out in the rear to get you away from trees and obstacles. A little brief tour over the stuff here. The sliders, there's two sets of sliders here, two pairs of sliders. And the ones up on top here are uh, the Suzuki ones. All right, sidekick's on the hoist, and we are ready to go with a slider install. We've uh, placed the slider on some pads here uh, on the hoist arms, so not to scratch it, of course. And I have cleaned the frame where we're gonna weld it up, and I actually have, if you look closely, I have some little nubs left from my original tack welds to show me exactly where to place these guys so that I'm confident in my positioning, which is really crucial because of course this is attaching uh, to the roof rack via those front supports that I made. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get this blocked up into place. Uh, basically what I do is I just use different sizes of steel tubing, uh, square steel tubing to bring it up into position, get it as close as I can, and from there I use uh, little airbags to, uh, to lift it into the exact position I want it, tack it again, double check everything, and then I weld it up after that. So uh, bear with me while I uh, get this thing raised up and we'll get back to you. Well, they're up. Yeah, I mean, it needs to be lifted up yet, but that's okay, because what I can do is just tack my bottoms, and then I'm good. So, I'm going to take 
gussets are going to contact, right? So if you lift up okay. or if you put something in there, okay. you'll feel when it's when it's good to go, right? Good. Getting ready? Yep. Yeah. Can you get any more out of it? That's about it. Okay, hold it there for a minute. Keep holding it. 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 Here, a little pressure on it. Yep. Keep holding. Thank you very much. Okay. Sliders are in place uh, with some heavy tacks right now. That way I can cut them if I need to, but uh, I think they're probably exactly where they should be. Sliders are all welded up. So those tacks have been completed. I've run full beads all the way around the tubes and the gussets now. Three standoffs, for, three frame standoffs for each slider is plenty to secure it to this little vehicle. And there you go. Nice and solid. Really clean fit up. Decent looking beads. And we're ready to go. Throw some undercoat on these things, or rock guard actually, and uh, and they're done. Moving forwards, we've got our rock sliders all welded up, and I've applied some rock guard to the welded areas, as you can see there. Have a look at the welds again, and we'll take a better look at those sliders kickouts. And now uh, you can see that front support for the roof rack that ties into the sliders, of course, nicely gusseted. And it's uh, held on with two um, 3 8 uh, grade 8 bolts as well as a half inch grade 8 bolt uh, that uh, goes up into a welded bung inside of that tube. Solid sliders with nice big kickouts, and those can be used conveniently as steps to get up to the basket. Yes, indeed, they can. Thanks so much for joining me today here at Balmer's Workshop for another video. Please check out all the Suzuki parts and all the other parts I have available at uh, my website, balmerfab.com. Uh, check out the Facebook page. There's always recent updates there. And uh, come back here for more videos real soon. We'll be doing all kinds of new stuff shortly. Please comment, like, and subscribe.